Hello, 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 hello. Everything okay? Good? Yeah. Thanks. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our virtual Wednesday evening service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. And we're actually going to start with a pre-service meditation for 10 minutes. So this gives us a chance to just center and connect with that presence of God within all of us and to just bring our awareness into the present moment. So I invite you to get comfortable in your bodies, to maybe take a nice deep breath, and with that breath as you release it, just allow any tension to flow out of your body. Close your eyes if you haven't already done so. to bring your awareness inward. Let's take a nice deep breath again, breathing in 
And as we release that breath, let's release any thoughts about the past or what is yet to be. And let's bring our awareness to the breath, using that as an anchor to keep our awareness on the present moment. So it may help you as you focus on the breath to silently say to yourself, Breathing in as you inhale, breathing out as you exhale. And if you find your mind wandering, which it definitely has a tendency to do, this is a time to develop that sense of compassion and that witness consciousness where we can just observe with compassion where our minds have gone, thinking, hearing, feeling, just becoming aware of where our minds have wandered. Be with that for a moment to just notice, are there any feelings associated? with what you were thinking or what you were focusing on. And don't judge them, just be aware. And then very compassionately bring your awareness back to the breath. Breathing in, breathing out.
And so I invite you to gently bring your awareness back into your surroundings, into your body temple. Just being aware of where you are seated right now, the weight of your body on whatever you're seated on. Maybe shrug your shoulders, wiggle, wiggle your toes. Take a nice deep breath again. And as you release that, open your eyes. So once again, welcome to our virtual Wednesday evening service, or Wednesday evening virtual service. How's that? Uh, it's so nice to have you with us on either Facebook Live or Zoom. And let's begin our service, as we always do, with our opening chant, led by our wonderful Gia Jambotti and Sam Krieger. So let's come together in consciousness, join in prayer to know that truth at yet a deeper level. That God indeed is in this place because God is in every place. God truly is that one life, that one power, that one infinite, invisible, pure goodness in every way it can be known, out of which everything in creation comes into being and that lives at the center of all that is, including each of us gathered for this service this evening. I know that we feel the impulse of the divine for a greater realization, experience, and expression of its nature through each of us. And we're here, joined together virtually in this way, to honor that impulse, to absolutely allow it to flow through this time together. And I know that each part of this service supports that awakening to our divine essence. I know we feel that vibration of love of all those who are of service this evening, the love that interconnects us, that allows us to feel our connection, even when we're not in the same location. I know it is that love and inspiration of God that flows through Sam and Gia this evening and inspires us. And I know that I'm opening myself right here, right now, to be that vessel through which the word of God is spoken and that we all hear, myself included, that which we need to hear, what we've come to hear, to have that greater realization of God at the center of our being. And so how grateful I am for all the healing and revealing that occurs during this time together and knowing it's all God in action. I say, thank you, God, and release this word knowing it is so. I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, amen. 
And so please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. There is an order, a rhythm, a purpose deep in my life. I'm learning to love from the place where I came beyond any time. Child of Wonder. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gia. Ah, so good evening again. My topic this evening is Celebrate You. And as many of you probably know, uh, this theme came out of um, the idea that yesterday was my 66th birthday. <laughs> and I followed through with my intention of finding many fun and sweet ways to celebrate this 66 years on this planet. And um, since I did that for myself, I thought we would talk, we would talk about celebrating 
you, now that I've had my turn. <laughs> but honestly, the idea of celebrating ourselves is not about something that we do once a year, but really, um, I see it as a spiritual practice that we should be doing on a regular basis. But the idea of that you know, can really be uncomfortable for those of us in this Western culture. I was recently reminded of something that I'd learned many years ago, that in Tibet, the Tibetan people generally don't question the fact that the underlying basic nature of all people is good. His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, apparently, when he first met with Buddhist teachers from the West, was uh, questioned about you know, how to deal with their students who so often expressed self-denigration. You know, they asked for advice on, you know, what do we do for people who just have such low self-esteem, uh, who don't basically like themselves? And apparently, the concept initially just didn't compute. And it didn't compute with many of the monks that were around with the, the Dalai Lama. Like, they couldn't understand. You don't basically love yourselves? You know, that idea of a negative self-image was really completely foreign to them. And it's not that in their philosophy or uh, their way of thinking that they had, didn't recognize the flaws in themselves or, you know, the foibles and flaws of others, but these flaws and foibles, character defects, whatever we want to call them, were seen as temporary and changeable. And there was this idea that we really shouldn't get caught up in letting things like that define us who we are or how we feel about ourselves and others. And there's this idea of looking at those things more like dark clouds in the sky or bad weather that you know, can absolutely wreak havoc, right? Bad weather storms can wreak havoc, but we know that in time they will pass and that the sun will always still be there. The sun is always there behind the clouds and it's there to be revealed. And that whole idea is really consistent with science of mind philosophy, you know, that our core nature is God's nature since we're all created out of that one life of God and God's infinite potential lies within us and that's what's most true and most real about us. So what we're reiterating over and over again as Dr. Mark pointed out to us on Sunday in our philosophy is God is all there is. That's our basic message. And we just have to find many, many ways to deliver that message. But we also teach that, you know, yes, God is all there is. God is in everything and everyone, but we only experience God's nature to the degree that we feel our oneness with God, that we really sense that presence of God in ourselves and around us and in others. When we have a negative self-image, when we relate to certain things, certain characteristics about ourselves that we feel, you know, we could do better, we could be better, and we let those define us, we're denying God's nature within us. We're denying that greater potential of God that's there to make good of any error or any problem we may have created through are not being fully awake to that divine nature as yet, and so we don't always show up at our best. We're actually turning our backs on God when we allow ourselves to be self-deprecating. So what I mean by celebrating, when I talk about celebrate you, celebrating ourselves, is anything that reflects a sense of caring for ourselves, ways that we can be kind, nurturing, 
encouraging toward ourselves. You know, and it doesn't have to be elaborate. You know, okay, yes, so I announced my birthday how many times so I could have all these wonderful wishes, and maybe I went over the top with the billboards, but, um, kidding, really. <laughs> but sometimes it can be, but it doesn't have to be. You know, it doesn't have to be elaborate, but I think it needs to be consistent. As I said earlier, I don't think that celebrating ourselves, showing appreciation and gratitude for ourselves uh, should be reserved for events like our birthdays. The more we develop a sense of celebrating the life that lives within us, feeling good about ourselves, about our core nature being good, the more positive our life experience is going to be. You know, when we don't, when we don't have a sense of basic goodness about ourselves, if that's not how we think of ourselves, is basically at our core being good, we depend on the outer world to provide us with reassurance. Have you ever felt undone by someone not validating you? Well, maybe not you, but do you know anyone that's ever, you've noticed they do that? When we're doing that, we're not feeling our own inner goodness. Ever felt like some flaw, some mistake, some failure completely invalidated every good thing about you? Well, in cases like that, if we're experiencing something like that, we're not sensing that underlying greater potential of God that's bigger than any of our mistakes or failures or ways that we didn't show up at our best. I remember a story that uh, my dear, dear friend, Reverend Bonnie Rose up in Ventura shared with me. Uh, Reverend Bonnie used to be part of the Metropolitan Opera. And uh, one of her friends landed a major role in one of the operas. And apparently one night, in one of her arias, she hit a false note. Apparently, that one false note just absolutely tormented her for days. And then one day she caught herself and she thought about, okay, yeah, that's right, I did mess up on that one note. What about the thousands of other ones, uh, notes that I sung that you know sounded beautiful? She caught herself in this self-deprecating mode, put it in a different perspective, she reframed it, and she reviewed where things went wrong, what had happened. She rehearsed, she did exercises to make sure that didn't happen again, so she learned from her mistake, and then she was able to let it go. So in other words, she tapped into her inner potential that was greater than the mistake. She took the human steps to learn from it and correct it. Now, how wonderful that she had enough of an underlying sense of that potential in herself, of that greater goodness in herself, to catch herself when she fell into that self-deprecation and self-denigration and made the adjustment she needed to make. How many of us have felt so dependent on others' approval or validation at different points in our lives that we just felt we absolutely had to have that to feel good about ourselves? Or maybe it's something we needed after we'd failed or made a mistake to help us feel better about ourselves. We just absolutely desperately needed people to reassure us. You know, uh, that, oh, that was just a mistake, or to tell us, you are such a good person, or you did really well here. Here's the thing. It's absolutely wonderful. It's wonderful to receive positive feedback and appreciation from others. And I think what we do, that those are ways that God's love comes to us through human experiences, and we should graciously and openly 
receive, that positive feedback, that encouragement, we absolutely should appreciate it. But there's a difference between appreciating it, graciously accepting it, and absolutely needing it. When we depend on others to make us feel good about ourselves, we really need to look at what needs to be healed in us for us to have that greater sense of wholeness. Because you know, if we don't feel it within ourselves, there's no amount of validation from the outside that's going to help. You know, I'd like to just reveal something to you in case you hadn't become aware of this. Who is the one person that you spend every moment of your earthly life with? It's you. Oh, God, I know that may come as a shock, but it's true. You are the person you spend every moment of your earthly life with. If you don't basically feel good about yourself, if you don't have a sense of God's goodness in you, no amount of validation from the outside will, you know, will completely fulfill you. You'll feel good for a while, and then you'll go back to that nagging feeling of not being enough. Years ago, I, uh, I did a talk about this idea of looking for that perfect someone, that special someone, uh, as many of us do in life. And as I was working on the talk, this, I thought about you know how we post. Nowadays, we do internet dating, and we post information about ourselves on the internet. In the old days, we used to put ads in the newspaper. Um, but I thought about what? if we really were honest about sometimes when we have this need for that other person in our lives, what if we were honest about what we're expecting of them and we put that in our ad or posted it online? And this ad just kind of came to mind. That I, couldn't, I just started typing away on my computer. It kind of went like this. Seeking my special someone. I'm pretty insecure, so I'll be needing you to validate me a lot. When you do, however, since I don't really believe in my own worthiness, it'll only make me feel better for a while. So I'll keep coming back to you for more validation, expecting you to make me feel better, and somehow, no matter how much you do, it just won't be enough. Eventually, <laughs> I'll suck the life out of you, and it won't have done much to make me feel better. But won't you give it a try? <laughs> Looking forward to hearing from you. <laughs> hmm, I wonder who would answer that ad. But isn't that sometimes what we expect of others. I need you to make me feel good about me. I venture to guess that we've all been that person to some degree for some period of time when we were looking for outer validation. And so this idea of celebrating ourselves, I think it's about consciously making choices to do something positive for ourselves, to do so with a consciousness of, you know, this, this being that I am as an expression of God is worthy of caring and nurturing, and I'm going to honor, I'm going to celebrate that goodness of God within me. I think we should all, I mean, this is one thing, we should all at looking for at least one way to feel playful and joyful every day. It can be ever so simple, but just to look to be playful and joyful and with the consciousness of, oh, look at this playful, joyful part of my nature. 
look at this way I can express love and to celebrate that. But what I was thinking about is, you know, we, we are basically, we have, as human beings, we have a biological component, our physical self, a mental and emotional component, a social component, and a spiritual component. So what if we looked at consciously, like doing little things for ourselves, like to support ourselves, do something kind and nurturing for ourselves, to celebrate this physical part of ourselves, choose to do something that's healthy, that supports the body temple. And it could be as simple as a few times a day, take time to stop and just stretch and take a nice deep breath and feel the goodness of the divine that responds to that. And just feel good about that. Maybe it's about just you know, hydrating a little bit more. Most of us don't hydrate enough. Making a commitment to drinking a little bit more water during the day and just noticing how the body temple responds to that and feeling good about it. For our mental or emotional component, and I think we should treat ourselves each day to something that feels uplifting, as I said earlier, something that could be playful, um, something that makes us laugh, something that inspires us. It could be readings, it could be, there's so many things on YouTube now, you know, where you can get inspiration, where you could just stop for a moment and have a laugh. You know, it could be something like listening to music. I, I'm very much uplifted by music. Maybe to dance, and there you're taking care of the physical and the emotional component. But as we're doing it, we acknowledge that part of us that responds to this and feel good about it. From the social side, you know, this is part of us that loves to connect. And so if we consciously each day choose to celebrate that part of ourselves as celebrating our connections, thinking about the people we care about and the joy of having those relationships, maybe doing something as simple as sending a text or an email to someone and letting, us, letting them know that we appreciate them, and then feel the goodness inside of us that feels good about that. Again, we're celebrating that part of us that loves to connect and feeling the beauty of that and recognizing that. And from the spiritual side, it could be as simple as committing to maybe one more minute of meditation or to say, you know, why is it that I just can never get myself to do a gratitude journal at the end of the day. And if you don't like to write in a gratitude journal, do it mentally. Just take time to sit and pause and think about all the things you have to be grateful for. And as you do that, notice the part of you that feels good. And to say, wow, that's God in me. And to celebrate that. And that get, brings me to the idea of the gratitude journal. I know we love to give thanks for all the things, the relationships, the health, you know, the good things in our lives, but I think it's really important to pause each day and just recognize God's attributes in us and to be grateful. I'm grateful for being a vessel through which God's compassion gets to be activated, God's love, to feel the goodness of that and to appreciate it, to feel grateful for that part of us that yearns for and supports things that bring greater justice in the world, that part of us that is you know, inspiring or humorous and can pass that on and share that with the world. You know, as, as you do these things, you're aligning with God's nature in you that seeks to rejoice in itself as you. And as you find ways to remind yourself of that goodness, to nurture it and celebrate that core goodness in you, you experience more of that goodness and share it more generously with others. And so let's take a moment to turn within and work with that idea. 
And so I invite you, as you turn within, to become aware of your body temple as a vessel through which you express life. And it keeps changing. But to show appreciation for it, take a nice deep breath. And as you release it, savor and appreciate and celebrate that feeling, that goodness of the body temple responding to that. And take note of any thoughts or feelings that you're having and just notice your capacity to feel, to care, to emote, to think and create. And call to mind an image that fills you with a sense of beauty or an image that triggers a sense of love. And just celebrate and appreciate that capacity to think and to feel. And now let's move on to noticing that part of you that is social, that loves to connect with others, with life energies. And think of some act of sharing, sharing something with someone that you have done and something that you can do. And celebrate that part of you that seeks and finds and enjoys interconnecting with other forms. And now bring your awareness to that part of you that always looks for ways to love, to express joy, abundance, wholeness, every form of goodness possible. And acknowledge this as that permanent goodness of God that's always there, always finding new ways to express itself. And honor that as being what is most true and most real about you, about all beings. And allow yourself to just feel good and celebrate that truth. As you do, you celebrate the true you, the I am presence in you that's in all beings. And so from this place, I invite you to join me in knowing the truth for many of the human situations that we encounter along our journey, knowing that God is absolutely what is most true and most real about everything and everyone for that presence fills the universe and it is the very life that is living and expressing through each of us. And so let us join in knowing that for those who are having any kind of struggle with change, that that essence of God is changeless, birthless, deathless. And as we know this truth, this truth is revealed, absolutely eradicating any sense of discomfort with change. So the truth that we can always experience and express God in a new way in this life and beyond as things change. That brings comfort. Let us remember that this presence of the divine is a vibration of perfect health and wholeness so that where there is any experience of dis-ease or discord going on, we know this is the greater truth. Health, wholeness, well-being is the true nature of everything and everyone. And as we know this truth, the pathways of healing and the revealing of that truth come forth. Let us remember together that that presence in each of us is a creativity. It is a vibration that seeks to give and take in of itself and that we each are vessels through which this creative essence expresses uniquely and creatively. And as we remember this truth, we are all led to those perfect ways to give of ourselves uniquely and creatively where we are valued and appreciated. And let us join in remembering that 
This vibration of the divine, this life of God is limitless in its goodness. Where there's any experience of lack and limitation that's simply a human idea imposed upon God. And as we know the truth, that God is the infinite giver and receiver operating through us, we see a healing of this false belief and an ability to step into that greater experience of giving and receiving and being absolutely abundantly provided for in every way. And let us absolutely remember that that core nature of God is love. And as we open to that truth, to that vibration within us, we expand in our capacity to love ourselves and others. And from this place of love, knowing that its impulse is always for greater good, let us absolutely follow that impulse and move into silence for a few moments to set our own individual intentions for greater good. So whatever these intentions may be, greater good for ourselves, for loved ones, for situations in the world, let us remember right now that God is at the center of everything, everyone is at the center of each of these situations, and therefore good is revealed. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God and the same truth. And so it's with a heart just filled with gratitude for knowing this truth, for feeling it. I just say, thank you, God, and release this word, knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, amen. Yes. <laughs> so this is the time in our service for our affirmative giving. And just a reminder of the ways you can give. Of course, online, you should be seeing a link right now, uh, nhcrs.org forward slash give. And um, that will take you straight to our donation page. Uh, you can also text the word give to area code 818-457-3419. And we will be in the church office uh, after the service if you'd like to call in your donation uh, with a credit card or a debit card. We'll be here for about 15 minutes, so you can give that way. And of course, you can continue to send your checks. But however you're supporting us, you're just going to keep hearing me say this. Thank you, thank you, thank you, because we can't say it enough. So with that, feeling our intentions for the greater good that these tithes will do in the world. Let's put our hands to our hearts and say together, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you.
Thank you, Gia and Sam. <laughs> so, as we bring our service to a close, I want to say thank you to everyone who's been of service this evening. So let's start out in cyberland there. Uh, thank you to practitioners Bob Lyon and Gail Pallott for holding vigil for us this evening. On Zoom, thank you for support from Brenda Jordan, Lynn Romanowski and Ray Regan, and on Facebook Live. Well, Liz Racy, not only am I thanking you for that, but can I just say how fabulous you looked at the Oscars? <laughs> you looked wonderful, and it was such a joy. And thank Paul, your husband, for being so talented that we got to share that moment of excitement <laughs> with both of you and uh, all of those who were there to be honored. So. We celebrated you <laughs> that evening. Um, so, here in the sanctuary, thank you again to Adam and to Doreen and to Alma. We're all back there now at the back of the sanctuary. Adam making sure we're seen and heard up here. Doreen and Alma making sure that all the technical things are going well. To Nikki, who's on our second camera, and to our wonderful musical support from Gia and Sam once again my fellow 66-year-old, <laughs> not Gia. <laughs> I thought I'd better make that clear. <laughs> and to all of you for being with us once again, so appreciate it. A uh, few announcements. Uh, so once again, just if you missed it earlier, ways to give, nhcrs.org forward slash give. Um, and let me start uh, back up a little. Uh, to our calling in, if you'd like to call in. It's 818-762-7566 is the church number to give your donation over the phone. So back to nhcrs.org forward slash give, uh, where you can do a one-time donation or set up recurring donations, texting the word give to 818-457-3419. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Prayer with the practitioners available via Zoom uh, after service. So if you're on Facebook Live, just go to our website and uh, get on uh, the Zoom link and uh, we can set you up with a practitioner for one-on-one -on -one prayer in a private breakout room. You can continue to send your prayer requests to prayer at nhcrs.org or call the church office and select option four where you can leave a voicemail and we check those voicemails and emails every evening and send those requests out to our practitioners. Next Wednesday evening is our Teze service. Uh, so that'll be uh, May 5th and the meditation starts at uh, 6.50, service at seven. So we invite you to join us for this special service. The evening begins with a musical meditation followed by practitioner Joanne O'Brien, uh, whom I will be joining to facilitate an hour of sacred chanting, readings, and meditation. It's a really special service. I hope you can join. Our women's group, 
will meet this Sunday on Zoom at 1 p.m. All women are welcome. North Hollywood Church is offering uh, an exciting new class, The Creative Life. Uh, it's facilitated by our very creative and very, very wonderful Reverend Sidney Lehman Steen. It's a five-week class. It begins on Tuesday, May 4th. At, so it's next Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Zoom. It's based on the book, The Creative Life, Seven Keys to Your Inner Genius by Eric Butterworth, and the cost is $100. And we're also really excited to announce that limited in-person attendance in the sanctuary will uh, begin on Sunday, May 16th. It'll only be for the one service at 945. We'll continue to broadcast on Zoom and Facebook Live. We'll be doing that, I think, from, from now on, period. Um, but if you'd like to be here in person, you can make your reservation starting not this coming Sunday, but the following, May 9th, or you can call into the church office. And our Wednesday evening service for right now will continue to be only on Facebook Live and Zoom. Reminder that our Zoom virtual patio is always uh, going on before, 20 minutes before service, and then afterwards, so you can visit with your church community uh, via Zoom. And the men's group meets every Sunday from 11 to 11.30. All men are welcome. And our Zoom meditation continues every morning, Monday through Saturday from 8 to 8.15. So for all the links to any of those activities, go to our website. What is it again? nhcrs.org. Yay! And uh, you can get uh, information about the activities and also sign up for weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. So with that, again, thank you for being here. We celebrate all of you who are with us this evening. Let's turn our intention inward one more time. Giving thanks once again for all the blessings we've received in this time together, knowing that everything has been of God, is always of God. I give thanks for the various ways throughout the service that we were awakened to, that divine spark, that divine essence of our being, and that we can be more aware of feeling it, sensing it, and celebrating it each moment of our lives. And so giving thanks for the healing and revealing that we've all shared. I just say thank you, God, and release this word. Knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. Thank you again for being with us. Let's close this out in song. Mm -hmm.